Sabado, the election's over. The Democrats lost. What are we going to do? Those are the types of questions that I've been getting nonstop since we, the election was over. And so today what I want to talk about is I want to talk about my position as it relates to the election and what I think we do going forward. Uh, people that have asked me, Sabado, what do you think about the election? I think the American people have spoken. For half of America, the chosen candidate wasn't chosen. That's the way democracy works. I'm happy to see that democracy works. I'm happy to see that we're going to have a peaceful transition of power. And I'm happy to see that we see are able to see how elections should go as opposed to all of the bluster and all of the misinformation about elections. But I do think that this election has still left Americans deeply divided. And unfortunately, part of the challenge is not necessarily whether one side is right or wrong or because anybody's right or wrong. It's because of the information that we get. Some of us get information from some sources that skew information one way. Some of us get information another way that's skewed a different way. But at the end of the day, the information that we're getting is editorialized. And when you editorialize any information, what you're essentially getting is you may be getting the facts, but you're getting the facts with a little bit of spin or you're getting the facts with a little bit of opinion behind it, which if prefaced the right way, you don't know which piece of that is the opinion or the spin. And it creates a scenario where we lose the ability to have good information. And unfortunately, most of us don't have the time to go through and read every single issue. And so we have to go on what people say or people that we think we should trust say or what the mass media says. So I think that's a tragedy because I think the upshot of that is that we have an electorate who's extremely divided. But even more importantly than that is when you look at the lines that we're divided among, I think it's I think that's a tragedy. You've got racial lines, you have socioeconomic lines, you have cultural lines, you have gender lines, you have uh, national origin lines. And so what happens is we've gotten to this place where everybody thinks you're either right or you're wrong. And I think outside of the process of government, outside of the process of elections, outside of healthy debate on the issues, we've gotten to this place where if you believe this, we're friends. If you don't believe this, then we're not friends. And the unfortunate piece is is it less and less of it plays into the values of people. And so what I want to talk a little bit about today is where do I go with all of this information? Part of what I've communicated to you is I have a responsibility to provide good information based on my story and how I was able to reach financial independence. So that's not going to stop. And I think that becomes even more important than ever, because I think there will be some things as time goes on that create a further split from people that have a bunch of money and people that don't have any money. And that's gonna create an even bigger split because that's gonna reduce the amount of information or to reduce the mechanisms of communicating with people that maybe don't have the information about financial information, about how to gain financial independence, about how to save and all of those types of things. So I think the work that I'm doing here and that many others are doing across the YouTube platform, I think is incredibly important. I think more now than ever, it's important that we, number one, make sure that we can go to good sources to get information. Number two, that we share that information. And number three is I think we have to start healing as a nation. The next question becomes, how do you heal as a nation? And I think it's a, I think it's a difficult and I think it's a long process. But I'm going to start with some basic assumptions. Basic assumption number one. Most people want to see what's best for other people. I don't think most people go around thinking of ways to hurt other people. Now, are there people that do that? Absolutely. There's trolls on YouTube. I get them from time to time that leave uh, non-constructive comments. But for the most part, most people want to help other people. Most people see a person in pain. They want to help that person in pain regardless of race or gender or national origin. I think that I don't think most people are racist. I think there are racist people. I think that our system is built so certain people have certain privileges that others may not have. I don't think most people go to bed every night thinking, how can I harm somebody that looks different than them or that believes different than them or that loves different than them or something like that. The reality is, is for a lot of people, those folks don't live in our neighborhoods. And so we don't see them. And so the only information we get is from where? Is from the editorialized media. In order to heal our country, what we have to be able to do is we have to operate with a both and philosophy. A person can be different and they can still be a good person. A person can have a different perspective and we don't understand it enough to maybe get behind it, but it doesn't mean that that person's a bad person. 
And I think eventually what will happen is when you start to look at our political dynamics over time, people are going to start looking at what's the right thing to do. Because until we get to the place of looking at what the right thing to do is, it's always going to be point, counterpoint, count, point, counterpoint. I don't like this person. I don't like that person. Now, I do think there is an underbelly in our society that believes that in order for one group to have anything, other groups can't have anything. And do I believe those people have been spoken to in the last several elections? 100%. Do I believe there are people who are afraid of change? 100%. Do I think that that is creating nefarious um, behavior in our society? Absolutely. I think the way you go at certain situations is as important as the situation in front of you or the way that you communicate an issue is maybe more important than the issue itself. And so it's my hope that as a country, we can allow ourselves the opportunity to heal. I think all the gotcha moments are gone. Um, it, it seems as though there was a 2016 and there was everything that happened in 2020. Then there's the gotcha moments. So now we have to get past the gotcha moments and really just getting back to the place where we could just love each other, where we can get to know people and embrace the fact that things are different. You know, it's not until we put labels on things that things start to have this nefarious purpose. I don't think anybody on this channel, and please tell me if you disagree, but I don't think anybody on this channel would disagree that different people should have the same opportunities to get whatever it is, assuming they work hard to get it. Now, how you get there is a different thing. And, and the, the perspective around that, it may differ, but the reason a perspective differs, not because the facts aren't true, it's because they had different experiences. And so, for example, there was a time in my life where my mother, or I'm sorry, my mother's life, my mother went to college. She couldn't finish college because the school that she went to, the, uh, the scholarships stopped, uh, stopped paying out. So what was she going to do? She couldn't go to school and she had to finish school much later. You know, there are, there are things that happen within people's lives that create a different experience. But what I think happens, we get into the place where we push somebody into a position where they have to dig in their heels. And as soon as we do that, we set up a fight. Um, so I'll give you an example. I think our society is set up for, so certain people have privileges, but I don't think all white people are racist. Does that mean they don't benefit from a system that's set up for them to succeed? No. But if you go out and tell somebody something that they honestly do not believe they are or have fought against, number one, they dig their heels in, in the ground. And number two, they look and say, you know, if I can't win, if I can't beat them, join them. You know, if I can't be seen as a non-racist, then why am I going to keep having this argument? And people just give up. So we have to stop giving up on each other because, you know, I have this channel and I've got about 570 plus people on this channel. My channel is not a white channel. It's not a black channel. It's not an Asian channel. It's not a woman channel or a male channel. It's a channel whose responsibility is to provide you good information and hopefully inspire you with my journey. And the fact is, is across all of my social media platforms, I've been able to do that. Well, isn't that the responsibility that we all have to each other? We may have different ways of getting there, and I don't, I don't have any problem with that. And I know I'm not trying to make all the people out in the South and the Californians, and I'm not trying to make Californians all the people in, in other countries. Uh, I do believe that we're a country of laws, and I do believe that we've evolved to becoming a, a country where we strive to, to create a more perfect union. The work is hard, and because we put a logo behind something or because we put a label behind something doesn't mean that the work gets a little bit easier. It's just an easier way to communicate it. So that's why I say things like DEI. It doesn't mean that we're going to take away to give to somebody else. It just means that everybody has an equitable opportunity to get a piece of the, of the pie. But when you editorialize it, then some people are going to take certain pieces of that information. They're going to spend it one way. Other people are going to take pieces of that information and they're going to spend it another way. And then you end up with that split. You know, maybe as a bit of a challenge, what I'd like to ask any of you resonate with me and which I think a lot of us do, which is why we're here. Then let's take a minute to just kind of step back and understand what is it that we're asking from our political adversaries? What are we asking for from other people? And what's the world that we want to live in? And ask yourself that question. Is there a situation that's come up recently 
where I had the opportunity to respond a little bit differently than maybe I responded. That might have built a bridge as opposed to, to tearing us apart. Um, I've had a lot of situations where I've interacted with people that don't look like me and they've never interacted with people that look like me. And they had strong impressions of people that looked like me. But then when I interacted with them and got to know them, we started to realize we wanted the same things. And so I think at the end of the day, as Americans, we want our freedoms. We want the ability to, we want safety. And we want to make sure that we have a opportunity to take care of ourselves and our family. I, I think that's the basis of everything. And how we do that, it's going to be different in, in Osceola, Iowa, than it's going to be in San Francisco, California, and Atlanta, Georgia, and Boston, Massachusetts, and so on and so forth. So, you know, so I, again, I just wanted to, to come out today. It was, it was a nice Friday. I had been taking some time to process all of this because I think there's a lot to unpack. I, I think there's a lot to do. I, I think that, you know, everybody has an opportunity here to reflect um, because I, again, I just don't, I, I refuse to believe I live in a country like America that is as great as America is, that people want to just spend their time hating each other. Like they say, don't boo, do something. So let's do something about this and start bringing the, bringing the world together. And I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, bringing together good information and perspective and, and keeping it real with you and, and giving you an open book on, on information and, and ideas. I'm going to ask that you do the same with me, but also do it with other people because we all owe it to each other. Because I think we've reached a point now that if we don't get our stuff together now, then we're just going to start down a trajectory that's going to hurt us in the longer term. And I don't think anybody wins in that. And what we don't want to do is end up like George Orwell's 1984. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it short here. Um, have a good rest of your day. Love each other. Uh, if you like this channel, please feel free to share it with others. I would ask that you do that. And um, that's about it. So on that note, have a good rest of your day. And I will talk to you soon.